Cloud is better. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, well, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for being here on Zoom and also in the Student Union Center at the Lufrano Intercultural uh, Gallery. My name is Ann Fister. I'm Associate Professor of Anthropology here at the University of North Florida, and I'm current director of the Digital Humanities Institute, or DHI. The DHI promotes collaboration on interdisciplinary projects that combine the use of technology with materials and methodologies from the humanities, fine arts, and social sciences. The DHI is composed of faculty and students of uh, across UNF. It's an intercollegial institute bringing together student and faculty interests and expertise through a variety of venues, including today's discussion. I set a few goals for my two year term as DHI director. And as an anthropologist, my goals include bringing more social science projects and perspectives to the DHI and broadening the focus of digital to include technology more generally. After all, in the field of anthropology, technology is nearly synonymous with human culture and ingenuity and is studied as a crucial component of the evolution of our species. In other words, technology is something that makes us very uniquely human. I'm also interested in underscoring the importance of public, public scholarship. And today's presentation is an example of the social sciences perspectives um, and uh, the the, um, the opportunity for ethnographic types of questioning and ethnographic types of conversations um, to, to share experience, um, experience-based knowledge and insider knowledge. So before I introduce our special guest, I would um, like to gratefully acknowledge that the University of North Florida is on the unceded ancestral homelands of the Mokama speaking Tamukwas. We recognize that other indigenous peoples also built homelands here, including the Yamasees and the Guales. For thousands of years, indigenous peoples made this region in, um, a vibrant center of diplomacy, exchange, and religious practice. We will pay respect to these nations and to their descendants. And now it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Jackal Tanalorn, co-founder and editor of Stealth, a trans masculine podcast. Jackal and I met, I was going to do the math prior Jackal, but I think it must have been seven or eight years ago in Mexico City. Stealth is an endeavor that was new to me that um, Jackal had reached out to me to tell me about his current endeavors. I'm so glad that he did. He, he and his colleagues launched Stealth on October 31st. 2021. Jackal grew up in the Los Angeles area and began transitioning around 1995 in the supportive Seattle community. He's a passionate anti-racist and anti-oppression advocate. He identifies as a trans man, FTM, non-binary and gender queer, and also as a white working class uh, and queer. He received his master's degree in global and sociocultural studies from Florida International University. He loves karaoke and currently lives with his dog and two cats in Mexico City, Mexico. We're so happy to have you here, Jackal. I'm so happy to, to you. Thank you so much. And yeah, it's been a pleasure to know you and work with you. And I was so thrilled to be invited here today to participate in this and, uh, and yeah, give some background to uh, trans masculine history and uh, our podcast that we uh, have developed. Uh, so I, you know, just want to say that this is going to be relatively uh, relaxed and open. And so if people have questions during the presentation, please feel free to raise your hand. If you don't want to be on, uh, on screen, make sure that you keep your uh, video off. Uh, the only way that you'll be recorded as part of the uh, as part of this um, UNF presentation is if you put your screen on, or you can actually put your uh, questions in the chat and and we'll will field those for me. So hmm. oh, there we go. So this first slide is um, to honor my dad, who actually just passed away on October 2nd, just a few weeks ago. 
Um, this photo was taken in April uh, of this year, <clears throat> along with my grandbaby, Elizabeth, who's there in her own stealth t-shirt, and just highlights the support and uh, love that can span uh, and bridge generations. And my hope for all of you, my wish for all of you is that you receive the love and support you deserve no matter what your gender or sexual identity is. So, you know, I'm just gonna give you a brief overview because you know, that's what teachers do, right? They, <laughs> they give you a, what's coming. And it's really simple. It's just like the podcast origins, uh, season one highlights, season two highlights, other stories that people might be interested in, other podcasts that people might be interested in, and then we'll end with a Q and A. So the origins actually, um, for me, it's kind of interesting, you know, COVID happened and all of this digital technology happened to reconnect people and the trans masculine community was no different, but we got trolled. What is what happened? Um, <laughs> we, there was this group that started, um, I can't even remember the name. I think it was like OG trans men or something like that on Facebook. And a ton of us of the old older generation just flocked to it right and we were like super excited to reconnect with each other and all of a sudden we started getting kind of suspicious of this uh group that we were in and uh, because the moderator wasn't really moderating they never responded to anything they didn't interact they didn't do anything uh so we got really suspicious and um but what was concerning is that because we were so excited to reconnect, we had been sharing our personal stories. We had been sharing like where we were living now, what would jobs we were doing and giving all of this personal information in this group that could be potentially dangerous to us as people who live in the world in regions that don't necessarily accept us or want us there and, you know, can be very uh, life-threatening. So, we bailed on that um, group and created a different group. Um, and this group was for people who had been on testosterone for at least 15 years. So I'm included in that batch. I've been on testosterone for about 25 years. Uh, I was born female. And uh, and this group you know, was very excited and they still are very active and giving advice about the long-term effects of testosterone or uh, your, you know, taking care of your cholesterol and your platelets and how, how it impacts the body and just various things like that. Um, but one of the things that started happening is processing because as an older generation, we felt really invisible and we are invisible. Like you look at me and you don't say, I mean, like Anne said, we'd known each other for a number of years. And Anne, when did you find out that I was transgender? When you sent me the, uh, well, I wasn't entirely sure then either, Jacko. <laughs> you said that you were doing this podcast. I'm like, right on, let's hear about it. <laughs> right. So, so I, I did not know. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you look at me and you don't see, you don't assume anything other than a cisgendered male life and 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 lifestyle like that's it um no matter what my sexuality or you assume my sexuality to be my gender identity you assume to be cisgender and that is a lot of our experiences in the older generations uh experience of of trans masculinity so we became really invisible and we became invisible to our own community and that did a couple of things one was it made us feel left behind but with, you know, there was all of these kind of discussions with uh, newer trans gender, trans masculine and non-binary folk who um, said that they didn't have any elders. They didn't stand on the shoulders of anybody. They had to figure out this stuff all by themselves. And we're like, Hey, Hey, we're here. Like, you know, part of the reason that you are able to even do what you're doing is because of the work that we have done in our, in the, in politics, in legislation, in healthcare, um, and you know, why can't you see us? You know, and part of that is because we blended so well and we faded into the background. So um, the other thing that was really disturbing for for us was this um, pronoun uh, issue, 
you know, that came up, which we labeled kind of the pronoun game that you had to like state your pronouns uh, in all of these Zoom chats, which if you're wanting to do that, please go ahead and do so. I don't require it because of, of what I'm going to share with you at the near the end uh, of the podcast. Um, um, and people had really strong reactions to this uh to the to the pronouns to having to state your pronouns um and it it sits particularly on my generation and my elders uh in particular so um so what um so we felt disconnected. We felt disconnected from the newer generation. We wanted to figure out like, or I wanted to figure out how to kind of bridge that gap. And so I had this idea about um, having, oh, sorry, I, I left out one story. And one of the people in this group that we had asked the group, um, does anybody live stealth? And it was interesting because I had actually never associated this word with our community, but immediately understood it, right? Um, and what I say is I don't live stealth. Like I, you know, am as out as I want to be. Like people don't share that they have diabetes when you first meet them or anything like this. So like, why should I share that I'm trans or was born AFAB? Um, but stealth happened to me, right? So all of a sudden you don't see my history and you know, I'm this blended person. And I thought, you know, these stories are really important. And I wanted to have like an oral history project, maybe an archive, but I also wanted it to have an audience. Um, and so I considered having this podcast, which I had no idea how to do or anything like that. And I reached out to a friend of mine, Kai, who's my co-host. And uh, he too, out of the blue, was already thinking about this. Like he too, he's a avid podcast listener. And he had the idea of having uh, a podcast about trans elder stories, trans masculine elder stories. So Stealth, the trans masculine podcast was born. Um, and we did, we had been meeting for about a few months. Let's see. Yeah. we had been meeting for about a few months and launched on October, for, on October 31st, which was the day before Transgender uh, Awareness Month. Um, so what was the point of this podcast? Well, Stealth is a podcast that captures the stories of trans masculine elders who transitioned around or before the year 2000. Uh, transitioning for the purposes of this podcast includes all forms of social and medical transitioning. We value the background and experiences of our trans masculine community and want to provide a space uh, for those who are often overlooked. The term stealth highlights the fact that for our generation, um, <clears throat> we were often told to hide our past and live an underground existence, and that throughout our lives, each of us has had to navigate issues of disclosure, which have in impacted us in, in many ways. Um, but really, we simply wanted to reconnect with our own elders and our litter mates, and what littermates means is those people who kind of transitioned around the same years that we did in the same geographical area and who we, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of like excited to, to see things progress. And Facebook is really nice. And it's really great, you know, to, you know, talk to people through text. But it's amazing to, to talk to people um, in face to face, you know, and zoom has really facilitated that for us. And uh, for a lot of people. So we got to interview uh, people and learn more in depth about their own stories rather than just what we remember of them as the elders who helped us in our own transition or our litter mates who, you know, we had this kind of playful relationship with uh, back in the day. <clears throat> and we also wanted to honor our elders um, because, you know, for the newer generation who says that they might not have uh, shoulders to stand on, I have shoulders to stand on, right? Like I'm 57, I'm almost 60. I've been on testosterone for 25 years and I'm not new. I'm not new. <clears throat> I'm not the first generation to do this. Um, I have many people who have come before me. I have people who have paved the way for me to be able to change my uh, 
driver's license, my passport, get the medical care that I want. Like I have a lot of shoulders and appreciation to, to honor. And we also wanted to hopefully bridge this generation gap, right? So we wanted to bring these stories to the forefront so that people knew and learned about trans masculine history in particular, because trans feminine history is really visible and trans masculine history is really, really invisible. So we, that was kind of our, our three kind of major uh, things for, for developing this podcast. Um, and so in season one, I just want to highlight a few of the, of the interviews that we've did. We did 20 or around 2019. Um, and we pe- basically just asked people to share their story of learning when they first discovered transmasculine identities. Uh, because again, <clears throat> with newer generation of transmasculine and non-binary people, it's like you're growing up with the knowledge. Well, we didn't, you know, a lot of us didn't know that it existed until we were in our 20s, 30s, 40s, sometimes even 50s. Um, And so when did they learn about transmasculine identities? What were they told to do or not do in the the era that they were transitioning? Um, And we asked how they felt about the newer generation um, and what they felt about the term stealth, because stealth is a very, very loaded term in our community. Um, that some people feel means that you're being sneaky or that you're lying and that they think that it does a disservice to our community. For me, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't trigger me in that way. I, like I said, feel like stealth happened to me. I don't feel any shame about it. Um, but I understand where the, where the idea comes from. And I also understand that people, Transmasculine people want to live a life of stealth. And I don't think they should be shamed for wanting to have that identity. Um, so our first, one of our very first, and probably the first episode in our season one was Jason. He was the earliest to transition in 1968. And this was the year that the Olympic athletes, Tommy Smith and John Car- Carlos, raised their fist for black power in uh, during the Star Spangled Banner um, during the Olympic Games. It was also the year that Richard Nixon was elected. Uh, so just to put it kind of in context, we call this the Traniversary. Um, and we're giving like some, some historical context to that. Jason says that the they them pronouns really triggers him because it reminds him of being called an it and being told he was an it in his uh, life and in his different stages of of transitioning. Um, And although he lives a fairly stealth life now, he is still one of the most renowned authors of trans masculine identities. So he wrote this book. I'm not sharing his last name. You can go look it up. Um, But because of how he lives his life, you know, I'm trying to be respectful of that as well. But he wrote this book, Trans Men and FTMs, Identities, Bodies, Bodies, Genders, and Sexualities. Um, And so he's a very known figure in our community. And he was back in, I mean, he was one of my elders. He was one of the people that helped me transition personally. Jude also... um, was one of the earlier people that we uh, interviewed in in season one. He's the eldest of all of the people that we've uh, interviewed. He just turned 82 and he transitioned in 1970. Uh, Jude is a longtime member of US PATH, which is the United States Professional Association for Transgender Health. And he has been fighting for years for an aging and elderly care subcommittee, which just had its first meeting last year in 2021. Jude's journey was way more fortunate than Jason's. Um, And although Jude also doesn't really feel like he lives a life of stealth, he feels invisible in the transgender community because he looks nothing more, as you can see from this book that he and Margot Wilson wrote, uh, nothing more like a little old Santa Claus, right? So he's a very, very sweet man, and uh, you don't want to miss his his uh, episode. Willie is also a renowned author um, and a very supremely interesting 
character. He claims his uh, transition, his uh, transition date as his social transition date in 1972 when he was seven years old. And Willie, um, although Willie didn't start taking testosterone until after the year 2000, uh, Willie's story, story highlights that children are aware of their gender, even when it doesn't coincide with the gender that they were assigned at birth. Um, and so his book on his book entitled Born on the Edge of Race and Gender is not one to, to be missed, and neither is his episode. Uh, Tristan is uh, the person that we wrap up season one with. Um, and again, like all of these episodes are, I mean, we have 19 episodes, but I'm only highlighting four of them. They're all super interesting and super rich in, in detail. Um, he is the founder of and managing editor of Transgress Press, which has published a number of trans and LGBTQ titles that should be on everybody's reading list. Uh, so I know that the, the LGBTQ uh, UNF Center here is, is a, a, a co-sponsor of this event. And so maybe people can, you know, share this information in, in, their, in their studies because they're very, very, uh, they're great books to read and know about. Tristan has produced has a has very profound things to say about being a black bodied trans person uh, in the USA, and we're very pr privileged to have him as a co host in season two as well. In season two. We're focusing on topics of aging, choosing to live a life of stealth and non-disclosure or, or non-disclosure and sex dating and relationships. Um, so I'm just gonna share a couple of clips. I hope that they, they happen. Uh, I made these clips for promoting our, our season. And this is a book by Jameson Green, Becoming a Vis Visible Man. It's one of the most uh, read books in the trans masculine community. Again, like, you know, all of these are, are, are incredible authors. Um, but here is a clip from his interview. When Lou Sullivan published the story about Billy Tipton's death, that's when I started oops. to think about aging. Oops, oops, so oops, right. oops. Hold I on. I, lo I lost <laughs> myself. I saw that, oh. I saw what happened to Billy's Okay, I lost everybody. I'm sorry, I did it wrong. Let me share screen again. Share screen, share sound. That's what I wanna do. Cause I don't think you can hear it, right? Unless I do that. So let me do this, go there. Okay, one, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. The um, audio of the video. The audio is very low on the first try. Okay. So let me see if I if this is better. When Lou Sullivan published the story, that's better. Okay. When Lou Sullivan published the story about Billy Tipton's death, that's when I started to think about aging wow. as a trans person. I had never it had never crossed my mind when I saw that and saw what happened to Billy's family, mm -hmm. what happened to him in his death. I thought, without educating people about who we are, the world will never be safe for us because there'll be no place for us wow. if people don't know who we are. So you can just see <clears throat> the passion that James has about the tip topic. Um, aging is not something that we think about when we're when we're first deciding to transition. The only thing that really is at the forefront of our minds is changing our bodies to match our socialized mental self, right? <clears throat> and so a lot of these things we don't consider. Um, and yet, you know, as time moves on, your body ages and things happen and there's not a lot of research on us. And so 
we don't know what's going to happen in the future. And, you know, like I said at the beginning, like, you know, my dad passed away and it makes you think like, what's my life going to be like when I pass away? What's if I have to go into a nursing home, what's my life going to be like? What are the nurses going to treat me like? Are they going to treat me based on my genitalia? If I've had bottom surgery, are the catheters going to work properly for my, for my genitalia? Like all of these different questions come up that people that cisgendered people don't need to think about, right? Like the dignity in dying um, that everybody wants, transgender people want too. And it's, it's a very important topic to make sure it gets on the table for anybody who's interested in pursuing health related careers, like making sure the transgendered issues are still on the table and not getting cut out of the table. When Oops. Lou, sorry, when Lou, sorry, how do I go to the next slide? Ha ha, I did it. Um, Zion is also a very interesting uh, character that we, um, or person, he's not a character, he's a real person, um, that we interviewed in season two. Uh, I think his episode is episode two, it's, it's already out if you want to listen to it. And he is interesting because he is uh an african-american trans man who lives in vietnam so he has very very interesting things to say about the differences about being a black male in the united states compared to uh, vietnam um he has interesting things about his thoughts about returning to the united states to care take care of his own elderly parents um and just the the differences between a white bodied trans masculine person and a black body trans masculine person. So I'm going to share a clip from him as well. Hello, everyone. Welcome to season two of Stealth, the trans masculine podcast. In season two, our goal is to produce 15 episodes around Kyle. three main topics, aging, non-disclosing trans masculine identified folks, and dating, sex, and relationships. As a black female, <laughs> I definitely got a vibe that I was a threat or intimidating but it's definitely 10 times that as a black man. And you can just see by, by Zion's face, like if you think that guy is intimidating, like, you know, go home because that he's just such a sweetheart. Um, but that's the reality of uh, black bodied people in the United States. And it's not just black men, it's black women as well, um, who are literally fighting for their lives, which is why black lives matter. Um, and so, Oops. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Oh, there we go. And my last one that I'm highlighting is um, Bryce. We were fortunate to interview Bryce, who is the author of Lou Sullivan's biography. And this highlights a lot of the people that we're not able to interview. Why? Because they've passed away already. Um, Daring, Lou, this biography is called uh, Daring to be a Man Among Men. Um, and Jameson Green, the person that I, I highlighted the, at first for season two, will be the voice of the audiobook, will, which should come out later this year, early 2023. Uh, Lou Sullivan was an activist and an inspiration to a whole generation of trans men. In a time when saying you were a trans man and attracted to men could get you denied hormone, hormone treatment, Lou showed us that trans men can be gay and very sadly died of AIDS in the 1980s uh, during the pandemic. So yeah, like, and again, like knowing the history, I think is very, very important. So people might not know that being trans and being gay could have been denied before. Like you had to be, there were certain steps that you had to go through. And one of them was that not only did you have gender dysphoria that said, I don't feel like I'm living in the correct body uh, gender wise, but that that gender had a, had a heterosexual sexuality attached to it. And if you said, yeah, my name's Jackal, I was born female, but I want to transition to be a man so that I could be with men, like so that I can be gay. No, mm -mm. that was you know, you would literally be denied hormone treatment. You're like, no, you just need to like figure out your feminine identity and be a heterosexual girl. Um, Lou Sullivan literally 
was the founding father father of changing that um, and being a inspir an inspiration for a generation of people who could one love cisgendered men and two live love transgendered men or transgendered women like that was a weird thing too like that was not like you know you're going to transition to be a guy and you're going to like love other trans men like why why you know like so we were considered freaks and oddities in such a way that it wasn't just about um us transitioning to be our authentic selves but it was you know from the medical perspective we were still freaks and so why would you want to be with another freak kind of thing so this really really opened the door for a lot of us to be living a broader spectrum of gender and sexual identities that the new generation does benefit from and a lot of it is because of Lou Sullivan Okay, see if I can go here. Um, I do want to mention some other stories of people who have passed uh, that we haven't had anybody interviewed specifically about, about these people. Um, I'll start with Billy Tipton. James uh, mentions Billy Tipton because Lou Sullivan had written about Billy Tipton when Billy P Tipton passed in the 80s. Um, Billy Tipton was a jazz musician who lived his entire life as stealth to the point where his wife at the time that he died says that he didn't, she didn't even know that uh, Billy Tipton was uh, assigned a female at birth. Um, many of you might have heard the name Brandon Tina, who was uh, Im immortalized in the, in the, the fictional film, Boys Don't Cry. Um, and Brandon Tina was a young trans masculine person who was brutally raped and later murdered uh, because of his gender identity. And then um, Southern Comfort is a documentary field film about Robert Eads, who died um, because he had ovarian cancer. He was living in rural Georgia and he was denied medical treatment because as a trans masculine appearing person having ovaries was an oddity and the medical uh, professionals did not want to treat him and denied him treatment until the point where when he did finally receive treatment it was too late and he died um the other things that i would like to mention really quickly are a couple of podcasts one podcast that i really like is gender reveal um, so if you ever want to, you know, have other podcasts besides stealth to listen to, like Gender Reveal is, is one. And Gender Meowster is just a super cool guy. I'm going to start sharing for a second because I want to come full circle. Uh, he actually interviewed us and um, he shared a clip. Come on, where's the clip? Oh, it's not right. Let's see if I can do this correctly. Uh, he shared a clip of me. <laughs> I don't know. I have so many tabs open. Uh, let's see. Give me a second, please. Uh, but he interviewed us, and uh, we were very happy to be on his show. Um, and so he says a lot of uh, things about. Um, he says a lot of things. There we go. He says a lot of things about, he gives a lot of um, uh, uh, advice, not advice, but I guess um, perspective on what it means to be trans and how, uh, what thing, language to use. And, and he's just very, very articulate about uh, how to be supportive of the trans Gen transgender community in general and trans masculine people in particular. So I'm going to share my screen again and I'm going to close out with this little clip. Hold on, let me see if I did that right. I'm going to share my screen again, make sure the sound is on. Yep. And that's the one I want to share. 
Yeah. And so for me, when the pronoun thing happened first, I want to say, um, before I say my, my story, is that I so love and appreciate the, the new youth of trans and non-binary uh, people because I think that without you, we wouldn't be able to move forward. Like our, you know, like we, we constantly have to be evolving and understanding um, and, and developing language and how that works and uh, promotes us and validates our being, right? Um, and for, but for me, what happened was that this new thing came out that was like, you know, in, especially in, 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 in any meeting kind of thing, but also especially in uh, diversity and inclusion uh, workshops, that you're supposed to state your name and your pronouns. And I had a visceral negative reaction to this. I was mm. so angry. Like, I was mm -hmm. so angry. And I had to examine that. Like, I was like, why am I so angry? And what happened was for me that I realized that in these situations, I would have to say, my name is Jacqueline, he, him, mm -hmm. which I do identify with. I don't identify as being they, them. But what that did was erased 30 years of my existence. Mm -hmm. And that did not feel good to me, right? Like yeah. you just, you know, like, okay, like now I'm just like this invisible, you know, white cisgender guy because I'm he, him, and you move on. You just move over me and you don't see me. And that felt bad. That felt really bad. And, um, or what I had to do, and this also felt bad, is I had to make a two-second decision if I was going to come out as trans in a room that I didn't know if I was safe in. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, okay, I'm he, him, but I have to tell you that I am trans and I spent 30 five years of my life as a woman and you know like pronouns don't always fit for me or I don't want you to just hear my pronouns and and make me invisible so it's like I either had a choice to be invisible and perpetuate my own invisibility or to make a two de two second decision if I was going to come out in an environment I didn't know if I was safe in yeah. So that that was a really big deal for me. Yeah. And I'm over it. I'm over it. It took me a year, but I'm, I'm over it. Uh, but it's still a good story. And I think that it's still an important thing for people to hear. Yeah, so that is uh, a little bit about my, my own history. And um, I just want to see if I can do this. Nope, I can't. Hold on one second. Uh, Go back because I want to end with. Oh my God, I'm so bad at this. Here we go. Yeah, Anne's never gonna invite me to to present again because she'd be like, "Yeah, you just like go all over the place, all over the map." Okay, let me do it one more time. Okay, so one. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Screen and uh oh, what's this? Oh my god, what's that? Hold on, I don't know what that is. That was weird. Try again, share screen. Nope, wow, I really don't know what's going on now. Okay. Sorry. Uh, oh my goodness. Can you guys see the screen that says gender reveal? Please say yes or no because I have somehow deleted you guys. Yes, we can see it. Thank you. We, well, okay. what, yes, what we see is, there you go. Yep, we see it. 
Okay. And so then I am ending. This is our <laughs> website. <laughs> Takes me a minute. I'm sorry. I'm old. Like, so like the podcast, it's, it's pretty polished because I do edit it, but like, this would be like, if you heard the interviews, it would be me and Kai doing things like this because we, you know, we're older. We don't have all of the tech tech skills that a lot of the younger generation has. But uh, this is our little bios on the website, and uh, I just want to thank everybody for for being here and uh, for helping uh, Anne and UNF and everybody uh, get this presentation together. And thank you so much. If you have any questions or comments, I'm here. Thank you, Jackal. I, I would like to open up for questions. Jackal and I were having a, a discussion earlier. I'll just say the, the presentation was wonderful. There's no need for an apology with technology, even, you know, and I don't count myself among those that consider themselves experts, but even the experts get tripped up with technology here, here and again, right? Um, so thanks very much. There, were, there, there is a lot to unpack, I feel like, and I'm hoping that folks will have questions. I certainly wrote down a few also. Um, but before we do that, should we stop recording? I think stopping recording is makes it better for the audience to have a q a and more more open dialogue and they can share their photo with me and and stuff and so it's more personal great okay so then i'm going to stop recording now thanks again to jackal tanelor and who you can contact on uh through this information here thank you but stay with us everybody <laughs> <laughs>